Hi, my name is Mike. I'm Austin Hartwell. So for you. And here's our project. It's a um, car wash, a uh, small toy car wash. And what we did for this project is we spent about a week uh, up at a farm um, converting a belt uh, for a tractor into a belt for uh, a car wash to run. And we made grooves and PVC pipe. And we put various components on our uh, car wash as well. Uh, a lot of time and effort, I could say. And yeah. So uh, some of our components, we got. Uh, we'll start from the beginning. We got our switches. Our switches feed uh, pumps. Our pumps, you know, they vary between just normal water and then soapy water. And then we have our spinners, which should uh, wash the car. And then we have uh, more water to rinse. And then at the end of our cycle, we got two fans to dry. Do that there. I'm going to talk about the box. It was all made. Everything was made from scratch. We cut all the, uh, the plexiglass, all the wood, and everything was all made. And uh, well, everything was. Basically. <laughs> all right, we're going to just put some mustard on it, I guess. <laughs> Start on this side. This is mud. Oh, it's new. Hold on. Some sort of. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new one. Hold on. Brand new mustard. Yep, and it has a new mustard. Just like the hot dog. That's a dirty stick. Alright, so there's some of the Oh no, oh, it's kind of wrong. <laughs> so, uh, oh, we should try it. It has no And, guess with that, without further ado, here we go. Oh. I think it's a good one or not. Oh, it's not. 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 You ran it through one more time. I'm sure that it would. Be. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Anders. This is Miles and Thomas. And our project was a conveyor belt simulating a beverage filling station. Now, some of the pieces that we use over here is, of course, the conveyor belt itself. Little motor to make it operate. Uh, light sensors. Little LED light. Start stop button. 7 segment display, a reset switch, and the HMI display, and that's everything So what we used to build it was just some angle iron that we picked up from Fleet Farm or your local Home Depot, wherever you want to get that. we got a 24 volt motor that's geared down so it can just work with the PLC. And we've got just dowels as our rollers and we got duct tape as our belt. Alright, so how the PLC does everything is that once it hits, um, once the cup hits this um, motion sensor, it activates a blue light over here and a fan, and after five seconds it will continue on the conveyor belt, which will hit this sensor, and then have a ring on the screen, and also activate the um, counter. Two seconds. 
Americans. That's it. I'm Cody Malinak, this is Daryl and Chica, and we made a home automation concept. So what we did was we took some we took some board to make a mock house and a mock garage, and we used a PLC to automate various components that you'd want to automate inside your house and perhaps even send offsite to like a security for a security firm. So at first we have the, we have the door here, which will emit a buzzer when the door is open and the outside lights will remain on for a set amount of time. And we have an attic fan here, operated by our HMI, that turns on when it's too hot, it turns off when it's too cold. Um, we also have a pump, um, a water on the floor type sensor. We just have that quickly automate quickly on the HMI so we can turn it on and off real quick. We also have a fire alarm-ish kind of thing so that when there's a fire um, we have a switch for that because yeah. it's a bit loud. Yes it is very loud. I don't want to turn it on. <laughs> I think yeah. it works. Yes. Um, and then we also have a garage door here that, uh, that it, it's on. automated. It has a um, a sensor inside so that if there's anything blocking the door or up against the door, it won't turn on. Like, I'll put my hand here and turn the garage door on, but it doesn't go on. So when I do it again, it'll go up. Yeah. That's our project. Hi, right, I'm Luis. This is David, Keith, and Joe. We built the drawbridge. So the drawbridge, we made it out of wood. Uh, we have this one string that's pulling the drawbridge back. back. We got our PLC and our VFD running it, so when the boat goes through the sensor, the bridge will lift, and then when it, the boat goes through the bridge and out the other sensor, the bridge will lower. And we got a motor behind this that's powering all that. And Joe will talk to you about the PLC side. The program is pretty much what Keith said. The laser here uh, will get broken, and that will tell the slip bridge to, or tell the motor to turn on, uh, lifting the bridge. It will go through and hit the second laser that we have, uh, which will tell it to then go the other way and then close the bridge. So, turn it on. The bolt will go up. Go through. Make it to the other side. Bridge maintenance, perfect for winter. Yep. And that's that. <laughs>
Влад не освещает. And uh, to add all those uh, H HMI and, uh, and the number, it shows what floor at the elevator cars in Korea. So that's that. Hi, my name's Heather. I'm Shaw. Our project was a mini parking garage. To show that there's bus available, we have a green light. And once there is five, or once cars start parking, parking in the garage, we have a fan going off to simulate uh, ventilation. And this also shows how many spots are available. Um, when you activate the sensor, uh, there's a three second delay, and the motor will start. And the count will go down too. Um, you can talk. My displays uh, the green light when there's parking spots available. And once the parking lot is full, uh, red light will go off and the buzzer will go off at the same time. And, and so just simulate that. And then once somebody leaves out. I'm Scott. I'm Jack. So we made a fully automated like matchbox car track. Um, how it works is there's a thumb sensor here which gives you power, um, which turns on this motor um, spinning the course. It'll launch the car around the track and then another uh, motion sensor here. Um, when the motion sensor triggers, um, so we've got a finish thing here and a light sequence. Um, once the, everything's started, you'll get timed in milliseconds because it's really fast. Um, and we used buttons, motors, lights, the PLC, and the HMI um, for our components. This will also sequence telling you when to go and a buzzer will sound. Um, we can demonstrate it now. There's also a chance that it might not work. Sometimes the car falls off. It'll just the track. launch off right here. Heads up. <laughs> Almost made it. And when it finishes, it'll go here, making the proc sensor go off, stopping your time, and the sequence happens. Um, and then. Yeah, that's, that's about it. I'm Ben Prohaska. This is Andrew Pressigar. Yeah, we did a Lithbridge project. Hey, Wilson. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, we had a couple things going on right now. We have our car counter on right now. That's why this bridge is stopped. Anytime there's a car on the bridge, it won't work. So we could probably turn that off. I can show you how these sensors work. Yeah. So, anything below the sensor, let's travel on and then fall to its doom. But, we have an actual ship going through. The lights will turn from yellow to red. Once the lights turn red, the bridge will go up. Continue on through, go back down, the lights turn back to green. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm Matt Olson, this is Matt Lovett, Dave Gustafson, I'm Tanner Eich. And uh, essentially what we got for you today is a baseball pitching machine that will, will drop a ball in, it will shoot the ball at the target, once we hit the target, we'll get a point, and then we keep track of all the points on the HMI. We show the high score and all that, and we can 
and I'll show you what it looks like now. And the target is just two aluminum plates that once the ball hits, they'll connect, completing a circuit. Doing all the better. aren't going very far because we don't have a super strong motor, but if we wanted we could have a much stronger motor. We could increase the distance and they would have the target going on. But we used what we had and we got it to work as best as we could. Alright, I'm Sergey, this is Wilson and this is Jimmy. And we made a Ferris wheel. Uh, basically, this is our plane pole, so it's visible for the planes. That's the Ferris wheel. Which and has all of the teachers yeah. on there, too. And they're all going to go through all the They're all going to go on the ride. Uh, we have a motor here that's going to provide us the power to spin it. We have three different gears to, uh, depends on what kind of speed you want. Uh, over here we have a sensor that acts as a counter for how many revolutions it does. And uh, over here we have uh, three lights, green, yellow, and red. Red for when it stop, green for when it's going, and yellow will flash five times before it starts. And then on this HDMI here, you can see it stopped, and then when it starts going, this will turn green. And then this progress bar tracks how many rotations have gone by. We've got this push button here to uh, activate it. There's a five second delay on it with the light and the buzzer. And then after 20 rotation, it's going to stop by itself. all the way up and the HMI says it's stop. And that's our Ferris wheel. Yep.